Big engine, little car. It's a simple formula that has created some of the greatest pavement pounders in automotive history. This simple mantra has intrigued me as long as I can remember and has shaped the kinds of cars I've loved throughout my life. There are countless examples of little cars powered by big engines, some bordering on pure insanity, but my favorite are two-seat V8 Roadsters and my dream has always been to build one of my own. Imagine a lightweight, nimble, powerful, balanced sports car that is sure-footed and enjoyable to drive while delivering an addictive, breathtaking wave of torque from a big, burly V8 engine. This is my idea of the perfect driver's car, and this is what Project Thunderbolt is all about. I can follow this spark all the way back to the May 1993 issue of Car and Driver. As a car-crazy kid in high school back then, I was very intrigued by the total package of the Miata. It seemed like an incredibly well-executed sports car and was like nothing else on the road back then. But the conservative performance left me wondering if more was possible. Well, tucked away at the end of that car and driver comparison was a single page that would set me on a 22-year quest to build my very own V8-powered Miata. Over the years, I never stopped thinking about this. I tried my hand at turbocharging a stock Miata, which was great fun, but still didn't quite scratch that itch. I even tried to talk myself out of it. But things changed when I learned about folks swapping the all-aluminum Chevrolet LS engines into these cars. Fitting this compact, lightweight V8 powerhouse into such an excellent chassis seemed like wicked destiny. But sometimes all you need is just a little kick in the rear to get moving. For me, that came when I saw this picture. Just look at it. Right then, I made up my mind. Somehow, some way, in the near future, I would build my dream car. After countless hours planning and thinking through my options, I went on the hunt for the perfect Miata to start with. My choice was this 2004 Mazda Speed version. In my opinion, this was the best version of the Miata to date. I love all of the custom factory touches and especially love the titanium gray metallic color. Now I know some folks may wince at the prospect of using this car for a V8 build, but I'll do my best to keep the soul of this car intact during its transformation. At first glance, it may seem that shoving a 6.2 liter V8 into a chassis like this would ruin the balance of the car, turning it into a nose-heavy sled that's only fast in a straight line. But when done properly, the handling magic of the MX-5 Miata is kept fully intact. The rumble of the V8 and the big horsepower injection simply complements the package in the same way that it did in the timeless Shelby Cobra. If this car is built well and all the important details are attended to, I think it can be timeless too. You've seen me tackle all sorts of projects over the years, but this is the build I've been working towards my whole life. It's going to challenge me, it's going to require me to learn new things, and it's going to be a blast. So come along with me on this journey and let's build a beast. Over the coming months, we will transform this car from a demure sports coupe into Thunderbolt. To build a car worthy of this name, we're going to have to give it some serious performance. So here's our plan. My goal is to keep this car as stock looking as possible from the outside. Other than some upgraded wheels and tires, all of the high performance hardware will be tucked away out of sight under the hood and under the car. It'll also look stock on the inside as we'll adapt our factory Mazda gauges to work with our new drivetrain. Of course, there's nothing stock about that big V8 roaring to life, but that's part of the fun. Thunderbolt will be built to carve up mountain roads, make the occasional trip to the drag strip and autocross, and of course scare my wife and various other folks from time to time. So here are the main ingredients that we'll use to accomplish that. Starting with the drivetrain, I called up the experts at Summit Racing and ordered a Chevrolet Performance LS3 crate engine that will be decked out with Chevrolet's CTSV accessory drive kit that includes power steering and air conditioning so I can keep my creature comforts intact. The brains of this beast will also come from Summit Racing in the form of Chevrolet's engine controller kit for a clean, hassle-free wiring job. Backing this engine up will be a Tremec T56 Magnum transmission, and further back will be a new Getrag 342 limited slip differential from a Cadillac CTSV. 
The foundation that makes this driveline conversion possible is the engine and transmission mounting kit from V8 Roadsters. This, along with other crucial parts from V8 Roadsters, like the differential mounting kit, driveline kit with axles, and more, will allow us to quickly and easily go from a pile of shiny parts to a complete, well-engineered drivetrain conversion that shows as well as it goes. For the wheels, tires, brakes, and suspension, I'll be choosing a variety of upgrades that will be suitable for our uses without being too harsh. I'm no spring chicken, so I want to enjoy driving this thing in comfort with lots of performance potential on the ready when needed. All through the process, I'll tell you exactly which parts I chose and where to get them, so hopefully it will help you when you're plotting and scheming to build your very own V8-powered Miata. All right, let's get to work. With the car on the lift, we can get a pretty good idea of the various pieces, parts, and brackets that we'll need to remove in order to free up that stock Miata drivetrain. But before we get started, let's spend a moment on organization and planning. A few months ago, I ramped up my information gathering in order to prepare for this project. I personally find it best to do as much research as I can before I turn a single wrench. The core guide that I used for this swap was created by Flying Miata and is available free online. In addition to this excellent walkthrough, I referenced a host of build threads found in online forums and other tips from sources like the Miata.net engine conversion section, the V8Miata.net forums, ls1tech.com, and summitracing.com's tech archives. I then printed out my reference materials, slid them in plastic sheet protectors, and put it all in a binder. To keep track of clips and fasteners as we disassemble the car, I picked up a few of these plastic organizer trays. Finally, I got an assortment of Ziploc bags and brightly colored masking tape for labeling things. A good assortment of tools is needed, and a lift definitely makes things easier, but I've seen plenty of folks online do the swap without one. Now that we're fully prepared, let's tear down. My first job was to drain all of the fluids, so I started by removing the front plastic under tray, which gave me access to drain the engine oil. As that was draining, I removed all of the chassis braces that this Miata comes equipped with from the factory. With all of those out of the way, we can now get a better view of the Miata's drivetrain. Next, I drained the transmission oil, differential oil, and then removed the exhaust system. After that, I brought the car back down so I could concentrate on the front end, specifically removing the front bumper, headlights, and fenders. parts are piling up fast. With those parts out of the way, you get a new appreciation for the ingenious packaging required to fit so many components in such a small space. The parts continue to fly now from the trunk as well as from the engine bay. Next up is the factory Mazda intercooler, which is often criticized for being too small given the space available.
Okay, I'll admit it, I'm an over-labeler. This takes more time to do initially, but always helps in the long run. I'd like to think I could easily remember where all of these little plugs and things go, but I know I'll forget over time and this guarantees I'll remember. Oh, and you all know I'm a die-hard Mitsubishi guy, so finding all of these little tri-diamonds under here makes me feel right at home. Next, I drained and removed the radiator, which had about 15% of a furry hunk of roadkill lodged in there. Yeah. Another little tip is to remove these clips carefully. It slows you down a bit, but keeping these intact will make reassembly much faster and easier. Before I brought the car into the garage, I had the air conditioning system professionally evacuated in order to make removing the components easy and friendly to the environment. That pile just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Next up, I recruited my awesome mother-in-law for a little help removing the Miata's aluminum hood. Then I unbolted the seats to give me plenty of room to work in the interior. With the seats out of the way, removing the center console is a breeze. Next, we remove the shift boot, which allows the transmission to ease out of the home it's occupied for the last 11 years. With the car back in the air, it's time to spray down all of the suspension and subframe components with penetrating oil to make them easier to remove. Alright folks, we're getting close to the big split where we'll separate the Miata's drivetrain from the body in grand fashion. So now we disconnect the subframe bolts in the front and back, we disconnect the shock bolts at all four wheels, and then the body should be able to be lifted up off the drivetrain. So let's see how it goes. Okay, I think I've got all the necessary doodads unplugged and out of the way. Here we go. Oh man, is that wild or what? My wife and kids got a huge kick out of this. This is yet another reason why the Miata is such a great platform for this conversion. The drivetrain practically removes itself. In all seriousness, the power plant frame that runs from the transmission to the differential ties the subframes together, which makes this special moment possible. We also now have our best look at the space we have to work with. Now it's clear to see why folks have been swapping various V8s in these cars since the early 90s. There's plenty of room! Honestly, I spent a fair amount of time just staring at this assembly, marveling at the engineering and packaging of every component. This was a truly interesting and fun moment of the project. 
Another fun moment was wheeling this thing around, as it was surprisingly easy to move. You know, I kind of wonder how hard it would be to make a go-kart out of this thing. No, no, stay focused, brain, stay focused. I think that's enough mayhem for one day. I'd like to thank you for watching and be sure to visit summitracing.com for all of your horsepower needs. They have graciously made this video series possible, so when you place your next order, please tell them Tom sent you. In the next episode, we'll continue the teardown process to get this chassis ready for that big V8 drivetrain. Also, please drop me a line sometime or send me some pictures of what you're working on. I can be found on Facebook and Twitter, just search for Tom's Turbo Garage. Finally, feel free to head on over to my new Miata website. As time goes by, I'll be posting detailed photos, parts list, and much more. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time.